My name is Michael Davis, and uh, I was a bass player in the MC5. In 1965, I met these young characters uh, in Detroit, and they had a band called the MC5, and we became friends. They thought it would be a good idea if I would play bass with them, and I didn't play bass, but uh, I learned to, I picked it up pretty quickly. I started out, I took cello lessons, and it didn't last very long, but it gave me that first feeling of playing with some other instruments, you know, and being on stage, and uh, so that was just kind of like a really early thing that happened. And then when I was 16 years old, my parents bought me a, a Gibson acoustic and six free lessons. And so, you know, I learned how to play all these open chords and uh, I kind of took it from there. Uh, I got up in front of the, our music class and sang Ruby Baby. And uh, it was astonishing, the reaction. It was like, wow, I didn't think it was going to be that. That's kind of how I got into it. And then after I met the MC5 in 65, um, yeah, just like, you know, the door was open. I had to go through it. I think the chemistry of the MC5 was really what made the band what it was. It was five completely different characters and just like, just giving it all. I saw the MC5 and they were so raw and powerful, I was blown away. They wanted to be the best band of all time. They were very serious about what they were doing. The MC5 took that very serious. You couldn't go and see that band without just being floored every time. I don't even know how to describe it at this point in time. It was just like an explosion. Just always one feeling. Yeah. About. On the they became very important because, again, there, there were no parameters for the MC5. Uh, there were, it really is rock without rules. Then they kick off the gun. It has this kind of eternal magic quality about it that it's something that was supposed to happen and didn't, but it did. And I was fortunate to be a part of it. The uh, surviving members of the MC5 uh, had an opportunity to go out and play. And uh, we took the opportunity and we got together and uh, we toured for about three years. Uh, is DKT MC5. And uh, we went all over the world, and uh, I kind of find out at that point that um, MC5 is much more well-known than I ever imagined. The legend of the MC5 is eternal. It's an eternal truth, and they can't, just can't get away from it. You can't avoid it. It's coming at you. I don't, I don't see it ever going away in some crazy form. Maybe, maybe we become a, you know, a, a action figure cartoon in the next decade or two. I regret that, um, that Rob passed away and that Fred passed away. I regret that they weren't here to enjoy this, this the immortality that they've achieved. And I'd like to see them again. And there's things I'd like to say to them, and there's things I'd like to share with them. And I just regret that they passed away. It's hard to believe they're not with us, all of them, today. And yet, in the memory, they're very much alive, and in my eardrums, which are still ringing, they are alive. Shaking Street, it's got that beat. Shaking Street, where all the kids be. Shaking Street. I feel like I am Detroit. I just love the place. I love the river. I love the, the I love everything. I love the vacant lots. I love the, 
the, the old streets, you know, Woodward Avenue and Grand River and Gratiot. And uh, I love the people. I walk into a convenience store or something, and it's just different. It's just, you know, it's like home. It's just home, you know, it's like, it's every bit in my cells. If you could go on TV and have free reign to say anything you wanted directly to the people of Detroit, mm -hmm. what would it be? I love you. I do have a foundation called Music is Revolution. What the foundation it was about is giving many grants of $500 to public school teachers to include music or to create a musical experience for their students. It's my belief that if everyone played an instrument just even once with a bunch of people, they'd be hooked and they'd realize something, what it feels like to play in an ensemble with other people and how they fit into a group and a community, and the whole thing is universal. It really is. And it makes nonviolent people, and it makes smarter people, and makes more involved people. And the next generation is, they're going to have their hands on the steering wheel, and we want to give them the power of music. If you give kids power of music, it'll change everything. Mike Davis plays bass just outrageously loud. I mean, a really great bass player. Davis is one person I've played with where uh, a bass player gets busy and starts playing around the tune instead of playing the actual roots and fifths. And he's one person who doesn't lose the song. He enhances it. I want to be remembered as an artist and artist who was able to teach something that nobody really knew about before because I discovered it in making it.